Grace and peace to all of you. It's so wonderful to see all of you here. Let me just see. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Risen. I don't know. I was a little weak. <laughs> Christ is risen. Alleluia. Oh, man, now you're talking. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Heavenly Father, on this Easter morning, we give you praise and thank you for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that in him there is life and salvation, and that in him you have brought forth your salvation unto this world. And we pray, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, you be present within us. Help us, Lord, to experience the risen Savior and Lord in our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I wonder how many of the children that are here this morning aren't part of our Sunday school or came yesterday to our Easter celebration for children. We had an Easter egg hunt, remember? And we made all these great crafts. We made wonderful crafts, and they were beautiful, and each of them really did lift up the theme of new life. And that was great. We had a butterfly one, that was really cool. And we had a whole bunch of Easter egg ones, not to mention an Easter egg hunt. Who found some Easter eggs yesterday? Well, yeah, quite a few of them, right? That was so much fun. Do you know that when I was little, the first thing I did on Easter Sunday morning was get up and start searching through the whole house looking for Easter eggs and then finding Easter eggs and then finding a basket with a chocolate Easter bunny in there and jelly beans and even them little peeps. <laughs> Any of you kids, did you, did you go? You did, great. <laughs> Eric, one of our high school students, excellent. <laughs> Any of the little children go for Easter? Oh, great, one of our other senior high. <laughs> There they are. You did. Yes, as a matter of fact, I have to be honest with you, and, uh, and spoiler alert, listen, Easter eggs, when I was little, I knew that the Easter bunny was the one who put all, hid all those Easter eggs. So believe it or not, I thought that little bunnies came out of Easter eggs. <laughs> Only to find out from this year's craft, that it's chicks. <laughs> Children, I gotta let you know, it's little baby chickens. But, but what I did wanna share with you was that this Easter egg represents new life. It represents new life in Christ, and that's a glorious thing. And I don't know how old I was when I started really focusing on that. But I do know that it's a wonderful way for youth programs in churches throughout the world to really help children to start to understand that. And so I heard this story about a, uh, a Sunday school teacher who used Easter eggs and had given those big Easter eggs to each of the class members and asked them to decorate the outside with all different kinds of things that they could color on there and all. And then when they were done doing that, she brought them outside to spring. And she asked them to please find expressions in God's beautiful spring that represent new life. And so some had a little azalea twig on there with some nice flowers. Others had dandelion. Others had different things that represented new life. But there was one child 
who didn't put anything in the egg. So when they all gathered together to start talking about this, they would go from one to the other and the children would explain what they had on the outside and what it was that they put on the inside. And when they got to the child that didn't put anything in there, the other kids, even the teacher, thought that maybe he just wasn't in compliance, didn't want to participate. But when asked about it, he just simply said, my mom taught me that Easter eggs represent the tomb of our Lord Jesus. And if it's to be an Easter tomb, then there's nothing on the inside. And so I have an Easter egg. Isn't that a cool way to think of Easter eggs? So no more do we hard boil the eggs. <laughs> Although I do love a good egg salad. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, it's a way of looking at Easter and proclaiming that Jesus Christ is risen, that he lives, that the tomb is empty. And so I know that so many gather in churches throughout the world to celebrate that reality in our lives. And I'm sure that there are some among us that through struggle or difficulty come hoping for reassurance of what the church proclaims as the foundation of our beliefs, that there truly is life after death because Jesus Christ, though he died on the cross, and that's for sure, even the spear in, the, in his side helped to assure us of that fact that the tomb was empty and there was the proclamation that he is not here, he has risen. In Luke's gospel set for today, the women who had gone there had that experience. The only thing was that they didn't encounter the risen Christ. They were merely told that he had risen. They didn't have the assurance as was given in other Gospels, not in Luke's. Interesting. As a matter of fact, they were perplexed, and when they came and told the other disciples what had happened and what they were told, the other disciples didn't believe it either, and they thought that this was an idle tale. So here we are today, all these centuries later, and we come seeking reassurance that just because the tomb was empty, that might be so, but is Jesus Christ truly risen from the grave and alive? Well, let me let you know I don't have any real solid proof, at least not in the scientific way, but I do have what I feel in my heart is solid evidence. Evidence that Jesus Christ truly is risen from the grave and he is Lord. Let me share with you what I share with our confirmation students. And I want to just give an alert. Yes, this is going to be on the test. <laughs> we talk about intelligent design. If you were to look at this world, and this is a reality that today's science has reconfirmed dramatically, but it is a concept put forth by Aristotle 350 years before Jesus, that when you see this creation and see how gloriously it is <coughs> woven together, with meter and rhyme and intricate balances, that it cannot be here by chance. It's too perfectly aligned. Think about it this way. Animals, 
breathe in air and they breathe out <coughs> carbon dioxide. Plants, they breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen. You see how wonderful that is? I mean, that's a really cool thing, isn't it? Well, that's not it. There are so many aspects to God's creation that show us and scream out. Just think of the glory and the beauty of God's beautiful creation, of pure, beautiful water as it streams down through mountain streams, right into Poland spring bottles. <laughs> Truly, today's science confirms so beautifully that intelligent design is fundamental to our understanding of life. You just think about DNA and how these strands could come together and create such a unique, special, and glorious being, you. You think about so many things. Think about the black hole. How about Katie Bowman? All right, that was just a theory. They just thought that this was the case. And then just recently, because of her algorithm, she's the scientist from MIT that put it together and was able to coordinate eight super deluxe uh, telescopes and we have an image now of that which had been theorized, but it's there. How about it? Science, science is showing us the wonders of creation. From the early days, they would say, look at the stars above, how they scream out the majesty and glory of the creator, our God. They had no idea of the billions of light years that the expanse of the universe is. I mean, we've got Voyager 1 and 2 that have been set forth into outer space. They have broken out of our solar system and are now in interstellar space on their way to the next solar system. And they will be there shortly, in just about 40,000 years. <laughs> but don't worry. We've got gold records on board. You know, LPs <laughs> made of gold. I'm not kidding. And on them is the representation of life on Earth. All the wisdom and understanding that they felt the team would be appropriate to put on there. They even put a stylus in with it so that whoever the interstellar uh, travelers that find this can play it, hopefully on their Victrola. We'll see. <laughs> but do you know the things that are on there that represent life on Earth? Do you know that Chuck Berry's got Johnny B. Good on there? <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, and there is a point, the point is that we may not be able to declare that I have seen the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And for that reason, I proclaim to you that he lives. We not, may not be able to say that, but the evidence is powerful. It's kind of like the evidence of a way out there great big planet that is only theorized has not been seen yet. The reason why they know that it exists is because there are other orbiting celestial bodies out there past New, uh, Neptune that are, that are in orbit. And the only way that they can be in orbit is that there's a great big uh, planet out there that they are affected, that is, that are affected by that planet. So that's the idea. Let me ask you, 
And this is not just for us, but in every generation, the power and presence of Jesus Christ in the life of the world cannot be understated. How powerful the resurrected living Lord is in our world, in our experience. Do you know that the disciples who didn't get a chance to see Jesus at the tomb, they got their proof a little later, and boy, did it make all the difference. They were scared. They were bewildered. They weren't believing. But when they had a personal encounter with the living Lord Jesus Christ, it made all the difference. And Jesus Christ, alive and in them, brought forth the church. The church blossomed in that first century. Why? Because of the power of the risen Lord and Jesus Christ. And I pray that we in our lives have experienced Christ's power and presence as well. I know that for me, I know for sure that Jesus Christ lives. You know why? I just talked to him. I have experienced Christ's resurrected power in my life from being assured when I was struggling to being forgiven when I was ashamed to being empowered for my living. I have sensed Christ's power and I wonder if we all haven't experienced or witnessed the power of the living God among us. If we open our hearts and see that Jesus Christ lives and that the answer is life and that life abundant and eternal, we can see the power of Christ made manifest in so many different ways, individually in our lives, as well as together as the body of Christ. Have you seen the Holy Spirit manifest in glorious ways in wonderful acts of love and kindness to see Jesus moving in people who care about others? Just the one that I think is so cool is to see do you remember that whole team from Thailand of the young children soccer players that went exploring in the cave? And then the heavy torrential rains blocked them in there. And then they had to travel deeper into the cave to find higher grand, gra ground to stay. And in the meantime, then it flooded that cave. And these men, these courageous divers, put it together over those three weeks that those children we're stuck there with their coach. And what a wonderful expression of selflessness. And to see our world respond. We were glued to the sets. We were so happy and thankful. We were so glad to see this take place. Folks, together with one voice, we are the living presence of the living God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, by his spirit, is moving among us and within us. And our world is crying out for the healing power of Jesus Christ and his love. And that comes from us who are of his spirit, who have the love of Jesus deep in our hearts. We need to not recoil in fear but like the apostles, step forth in courage and in faith to show our world his love, to show it, to share it, to experience it together. Because let's face it, you can't prove love. You experience it. And the divine love of Jesus Christ has been poured out 
and fills us. Let's not be stingy. Let's share it and share it that others might come to the realization that Jesus Christ lives and that he is Lord of all. Praise you, Lord Jesus. And now may, oh, wait a second. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen, amen is right. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.